called the standard unit, I guess, uh, SI unit. And uh, so when we want to measure a solid, we use a gram for that. And if it's a large value, we use kg or kilogram. Now, in, in similarly, in memory, when we want to measure a computer's memory, we use the fundamental part, as which uh, fundamental unit, which is called bytes. Now, uh, one byte is e uh, one megabyte actually is equivalent to 1,024 bytes. This is important because when we want to measure memory, we need to understand how these bytes work. But you can also um, break down bytes like gram into smaller segments or into smaller parts. Like you, you can even um, measure a distance using the standard unit of meter. Now, if we want to measure a smaller distance, the less, uh, like the length of maybe uh, length of your pen suppose although it's not a realistic example but just for the sake of understanding if you want to measure the uh, length of the pen you will be using the uh, uh, me uh, measurement unit of centimeter now the centimeter is actually a smaller unit than the meter although meter is the standard unit in programming and in computing system byte is the uh, standard unit for memory. Now, when we want to measure smaller units, we use bit. So one byte is equivalent to eight bits of data. And li this is uh, something like uh, if we want uh, if we want to convert centimeter into a meter, it's something like one meter is equivalent to hundred centimeter. So one byte is equivalent to one bit. So we won't be talking about bits in here because it might get confusing. We'll be sticking to bytes. Now it uh, this variable in here when we want to uh, talk about this variable in terms of memory allocation this variable goes to the memory computer's memory using uh, the uh, compiler which has got the common language runtime so it, let me shorten this up it goes to the memory and it asks the memory that uh, the programmer has declared a variable that will only take whole numbers so I need a space to store the value once I've got the value. But right now, I haven't got the value, so j I just need the plot or ju I just need the space. That's it. I've, I, I'm not going to store the value. So this is called a variable declaration. We are just declaring the identifier or we are just declaring the variable name in here. But if we later on inside our program want to uh, assign a value to this variable then we can directly write this number one variable will hold a value of 10 so this is a valid statement too so we have got two statements in here now what the what this program does once we save it so uh, we can save this as variables so this is chapter 2 so this is variable we can name it variables 2 and it needs to have the extension of dot cs if you you don't even need to add the dot cs the um, the save type will already do it for you so let's save this and this is successfully saved we won't be compiling this right now because we will be adding some more code in here now what we got in here is that we have got this is called the uh, let's add a comment in here this is called variable declaration and this is called a uh, variable initiali initi initialization yep so these are two valid statements now you can actually combine these two statements into one so just for the sake of simplicity I'm using two statements but I will be showing you how to do that I have already actually shown you how to do that but I'll be showing you how to print that variables value on our screen now what this variable does uh, the second statement actually does is that it goes to the memory the second time uh, through the compiler and it asks the mem it, uh, it actually tells the memory that 
Mr. Memory, I've got this uh, integer value of 10. Now, my programmer uh, has initialized me or assigned a value of 10 to me. Now, please store this value 10 to your memory. So the first thing what it does is that when we declare this, it just tells the memory that it's it needs a space inside our memory. It's not going to store anything, but in the latest segment or the latest statement, it tells the memory that it's ready to store the value of 10. Now we can actually place uh, other, uh, you can change this value to 100 even, but don't make it too large because this integer data type won't support uh, a lo very large number. We have other data type for that. Now this is not a, um, a valid or a legal statement in C sharp program, so let's erase this off. Now we have got um so actually this won't compile right now because uh this needs to be inside a class and a method uh mainly but for the sake of simplicity I'm actually showing you and this is syntactically or this is in programming's perspective this is correct these two statements are correct now let's combine both of these statements uh, let's erase this part Let's also erase this uh, command and let's assign the value of 100 in here. So we have got variable declaration and initialization, initialization in one single statement. So this, when when the compiler encounters this statement, it immediately it, Im it immediately uh, tells the compi uh, memory, a uh, computer's memory, that it needs to store, it needs to have a space, and it's going to immediately store the value of 100, which is an integer value, to, uh, to, uh, to the memory. Now, if later on you, you can actually change this uh, value, you can uh, replace this uh, uh, value with a new value for the variable number 1. Now, you need to remember that at first we used the data type of integer. So this variable that we named as um, number one will only hold integer data type. So later on you can't actually uh, go on and use a string like this. You can't actually uh, store a string like this. Uh, and this will be invalid and the code won't compile. You will always need to store an integer data type in here. Now basically, we have got I guess thirteen um, data types in uh, in C sharp programming, but those thirteen data types can be classified or categorized into four main uh, four major uh, da uh, uh, data types. The four major data types are the integral, the floating point, the decimal, and the boolean. Now let's have a look at how uh, what are there and we'll be initially initially looking at uh, how many uh, each of them has so the in the, the first thing that we're looking into or moving into is the integral data type so the integral data type has got uh, nine subcategories but before we move along I've just created a short script this is a really simple script you don't need to freak out if you uh, <laughs> look at this but this is uh you shouldn't be using this script but just for the purpose of demonstration I'm using this this is quite unsafe because our program is um, is going to access the memory directly from this uh, compiler so th I'm not I'm not recommending this uh, pro uh, I'm not recommending to run this program in real life just for the sake of testing or just for the sake of learning you can do this but don't do that when you create a real program or a real solution or a real Windows application. Now we have got uh, a simple uh, CS script in here so we are using the namespace system in here you will be discussing about namespace in later chapters but let's start on with the class. So we have a we have got a class and we have got a method. This method is going to uh, measure it's going to retrieve how much uh, memory allocation does each 
data type 